Welcome to uh, Choosing a Fly Rod. What we're going to discuss today is the different rods that you need for different species of fish. Now rods typically go from a zero weight all the way up to a 15. Now you may ask yourself, why do they have all those different numbers? Zero weights up to a four weight are for the smaller, smaller fish in creeks probably 10 to 12 inch rainbows or crappie or the sunfish family that's what you would be fishing with those five to seven weights are for trout in medium size and large rivers and still water lakes eight to ten weights are for the bigger species of fish such as pike muskie channel cats carp they're all bigger species of fish and they need that tackle in order to fight the fish properly and then the 10 weights, once again, 10 to 12 salt water, or you can still use them in fresh water in certain locations for the bigger species of fish. Okay, so when you choose a fly rod, what you look for, depending on the line weight, it'll tell you on the butt of the rod on the blank what line weight that rod is. So if you're looking for an 8 weight, then you know which rod it is. If you're looking for a nine weight, you know what rod it is. If you're looking for a three or four weight, all you have to do is look at the bottom of the blank and it will tell you the line weight, no problem whatsoever. Now, the first thing that you have to remember when you're purchasing a rod is the species of fish that you want. If you look at a three to four weight rod, you can tell it's a very light, lightweight rod Right. And what you're looking at is the number of guides on the rod, how they're placed. You want one more guide than the length of the rod in order to have a good rod. If you have one less guide, the line creates friction and it will not cast properly. So you want one more guide than the length of the rod. Since this is a 9 foot rod, there will be 10 guides on this rod. So this is a 3 weight rod which is ideal for sunfish, crappie, small trout, gold eye, moon eye, whatever you want to go for on the small side. Okay. Next thing you look at is the cork handle. Make sure that it's a good quality cork. And then the reel seat. Preferably if you have a double ring it's always better because a single ring will come loose sometimes. And I'd say 90% of the rods today have a double ring on the reel seat. The next rod <coughs> that I'm picking up is a six weight. Now this is ideal for trout and lakes, and the trout and lakes will get up, believe it or not, over 30 inches, in our lakes anyway. This is a great river rod if you're going to the bowl. It's also a really good rod when you're using smaller popping bugs for smallmouth bass. You have to remember, you also have to relate the size of fly that you're using to the weight of the rod that you're using as well. There's no way that you can cast a 6 to 10 inch musky or pipe fly on a 6 weight rod. The fly is just too heavy. Now the next rod is a universal rod. This is an 8 weight. You can virtually go for any species of fish with this rod in fresh water. That includes the 20, I believe it's 27 species of game fish in the province. So lake whitefish, tulipy, gold eye, moon eye, walleye, sauger, pike, smallmouth bass, largemouth bass, rainbows, browns, brookies, splakes, tigers, any fish that we want to go after. If you were limited to one choice, this is the choice that you would be making. So once again, the quality of cork is exceptional. Double locking rings on the real seat, little fighting butt, and this is a great rod. Next rod is a 10 weight. Now that's what I use down on the red for channel cats and carp. Number one, because of the current, and number two, because this rod has the backbone to land those bigger fish. 
Now, when I've been fly fishing on the red, I have not caught any channel cats smaller than 30 inches. Most of my fish are from 35 to 40 inches. Not bragging, just a fact. Big fish, you need a rod that's going to be able to handle those fish. If you go down there with a six weight, you're taking your life in your hands because you could end up breaking your fly rod, losing your fly line, and you won't have a very good day. The 10 weight system that I use is extremely well suited for the Red River and fly fishing on the Red. I will also use that 10 weight for muskie on Lake of the Woods when I do go out there. I also use it for large pike because I am throwing six to 10 inch streamers for those fish. So overall, when choosing a fly rod, you look at the components on the rod. Then what you have to do is you have to figure out how much disposable income you have. You do not have to buy a $350 fly rod for your first fly rod. You can get away. This rod here also comes in an eight weight, $70. So it doesn't cost a fortune to get into fly fishing. There's nothing wrong with this rod. It's a fast action rod. It's great for casting and your arm will not get tired at all. If you want to take a step up after you do it for a year, then yes, you can get into the more expensive rods. The reason they're more expensive, better quality cork. Now, because there is a cork shortage in the world, good quality cork, one cork ring could cost $10. So that's why the rods are priced the way they are. They use sick guides, which are very expensive guides. AAA grade cork, terrific reel seats. They're using all that and that's what you're paying for is the quality in the components plus quality graphite that they're using in the rods. Okay, if you remember, I showed you how to find the rod weight on the rod. Now, if you don't want to look for the rod and reel separately, what you can do is go towards a combo. These Bella's combos are actually really, really great. They're the kick butt combo that I've ever seen and it's amazing how much stuff they do have in there. So, the combo, you get the rod, you get the reel, you get backing, you get the line, you get the leader. In this combo here, the Prestige Collection, not only do you get that, but you get a rod too, you get forceps, you get strike indicators, you get dry fly float, you get two zingers, you get a pair of hemostats or forceps, and you get a selection of flies and a small tackle bag that you can carry everything in. These combos are great, just a fantastic way to go. Everything is there for you, everything is matched. All you have to do is tie the fly on and go fishing. That's how easy it is. So I hope I helped you out on, on choosing the rods and combos. So let's just recap for a minute. Three to four weights, great for smaller fish. You can do Cisco's gold eye, moon eye, small trout, sauger, all the smaller game fish species. Five to seven weights, trout in still waters, medium and large sized rivers for trout. You can also do walleye, smallmouth bass, so on. The larger weights, the eight to 10 weights, bigger species of fish, channel cats, carp, big pike, big muskie, that's what you're going for with those rods. So hopefully I've given you some information that you can use and be able to purchase a fly rod with no problem whatsoever. Okay, Stu, well thanks so much for your help today, helping us uh, navigate the tricky waters of fly fishing. It's actually not as tricky as you think. Uh, so now we have an idea of what kind of fly rods we need. Stay tuned to our next video. You'll find the link right here below because uh, we're going to be talking about what reels to pair with your fly rod. And if you found this video useful, 
Click like, give us a subscribe for more great content from our channel. Don't forget to head over to wildguide.ca for your free digital subscription to Wild Guide Magazine. Thanks for watching guys, we'll see you next time.